Good morning, good afternoon, good day, happy Wednesday. It's the third day of the week, and it is today's talk with Marty G, the unpodcast for family, friends, and the community, co workers, workers, friends, and whatnot. I am Marty G, and I've got another friend with me today. I've got Caitlin Vargas from Onward Eugene. Caitlin, how are you today? Great. I love how you say that with such enthusiasm. I'm going to start saying, I'm from Onward Eugene. You know, it reminds me, it's like um, when you, when I used to be on radio, I had to, I, I, they trained me how to say the call letters all the time. It's like, I don't know if you ever saw Private Parts with Howard Stern back in the day of the movie. They were training him how to say the call letters. And literally, you have to say the name with so much gusto. But it's today's talk with Marty G. So thank you. <laughs> I like it. Thank you very much. Glad you could be with me today. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm just had a great week. Lots of cool things are happening in Eugene. Uh, I got to meet the U.S. Secretary of Transportation yesterday. I'm kind of still there. on that high. He was down and nobody called me. I would have had him on the show. I'm like, what do you mean Pete was here? People were sending me pictures all day. Look, I'm with Pete. I'm like, is that a cutout? Was he really here? It was pretty cool. You know, he had the whole um, security detail, the guys with the suits and the earpieces and the Ray-Bans. Um, and he was so nice and he was so cool. Um, one of the first things he said to me, he's like, oh, you're, you were from Las Cruces, right? So he had read my bio, remembered my information. Wow. Um, and we had a big talk about it because his parents teach at the university there. And I was like, kind of deer in the headlights for a moment, but it was so cool and he's so passionate about transportation and it was a really great day. Yeah, that, that's that's awesome too because I, I heard that exact same sentiment, Caitlin, from everybody that talked to him yesterday. I've got a friend of mine that works uh, over at LTD and, and she was telling me that literally the way he presents is exactly how he is. He's just yeah. a real person and that's yeah. just rare in a public servant in that level. I mean, we're talking cabinet level dude, right? So that's yeah. awesome. Well, anyway. But we're talking about you. <laughs> talk about you. Tell me about what you do and who, where you're from. Let's talk about Onward Eugene. What is Onward Eugene and what do you do? So good question. I think Onward Eugene, um, as a newer nonprofit, um, Onward was actually started during the, uh, right before the pandemic really hit. So about January, 2020. And so what better time to start a new economic development nonprofit than when you have a complete international crisis, right? Yeah, global um, pandemic is always the best time for something new. Absolutely. So Onward um, was really born out of a few different initiatives, and this is really under the umbrella of Eugene Chamber of Commerce. So Onward looked at um, a few different areas that Eugene needed to develop and focus on um, to, prior to, our, to prioritize our economic development. So one is uh, business recruitment and expansion. We have this great uh, business and recruitment expansion manager, Nicole, who's just out there every day, beating the streets, talking to businesses, helping um, bring businesses here, helping them expand, helping them recover right now. That's an important part of what she's doing, um, focuses on a lot of on-the-job training. And then we have talent uh, leadership and development. If people are talented in Eugene, we want them to stay in Eugene and we want them to attract their other talented friends in Eugene. Right. So she focuses a lot on that. We have some leadership programs um, and just some different initiatives for folks to get involved and grow professionally and personally. And then the regional marketing and business recruitment that you'll see on your screen, um, that is Matt Sayre. Matt used to work at the Technology Association of Oregon and just took off running with all these great um, regional priorities. And now, um, you know, I guess a cool story about him is he was uh, part of the reason Southwest is Airlines is here. And currently, I think next month, they're offering $89 flights nonstop to Oakland, but just cool stuff. He's doing really cool uh -huh. things. Um, he helped a lot with um, McKenzie recovery after the fires, um, help bring some broadband up there and is working closely with that community. And then my initiative, the one that's close to my heart, I'm so passionate about and why I'm uh, here to talk to you today is um, entrepreneurship and innovation. So I am the startup community director for Onward and um, we have a physical location, 942 Olive, 
right across from the Davis downtown, um, where we location right there. Still, in oh, go ahead. What'd you say? It's that great location right down there in Bartopia. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, it's funny. People joke that the Davis is like kind of the cafeteria for entrepreneurs because you're in, you know, down down in this innovation district and you're that is plugging so away true. and yeah. then you go over there. <laughs> I can totally see that. So tell me, what were you doing before you came to Onward Eugene? I mean, you seem like you're you're just so entrenched in it. And have you been there since the beginning? No, I actually have a long history of more of your um, health and human services nonprofit. So I started in workforce development years ago. That was kind of my first professional uh, position. And then I was actually at Eugene Mission Homeless Shelter for five years and working on the front lines. And when I started my MBA program, I moved over into the admin side in marketing and uh, fundraising. And it was really cool because Eugene Mission never had an official fundraising position. So I was the very first development director and I had to just figure it out. And I made a ton of mistakes, but I also got to do some really cool things. Um, for example, Eugene Food Truck Fest. Um, and we had 14,000 people show up our first year. That was a learning experience. Uh, absolutely loved working at the mission. And then I popped over to affordable housing uh, for about two years. And then COVID hit and schools closed and daycare closed. And I was home for about a year until I started with Onward. So it's it's been an interesting path and trajectory. Um, and I'm super excited to just have a new focused fundraising is, is really fun. It's really great, but it's pretty exciting to do something new. So your passion seems to me, it sounds a lot like it's community service and helping people. Uh, yes, absolutely. I've just always enjoyed the relationship aspect of finding potential in others and helping that and helping them reach that potential. Um, that's that's always been an interest of mine. And there's just a lot of wonderful people in Eugene, whether it was folks um, that were experiencing homelessness that were staying at Eugene Mission, just helping them um, really transition and transform all the way from now, you know, there's people who are entrepreneurs who have great ideas and have no idea where to start or what resources exist. So it's all about kind of just helping people um, with a hand up and hand out. So if I was to be like someone looking for help, maybe if I have an idea or something, what what kind of things are, what, what would I find if I was to come to Onward, Onward Eugene? What, what could you help me with from an Onward Eugene standpoint? So really the first step is just a conversation at where you're at with this idea and what this idea really entails. So we have a large um, network of resources. And what that means is we have mentors who they've been through this process and they want to give back. They want to help out. So they're going to be um, happy to talk to you and just kind of guide you along the way. And then we also um, work really closely with the Small Business Development Center. So if you're saying, I've got this idea for an app, I, I think every single university in America could use this app to do this thing. That's perfect for Onward. We focus on high growth, more scalable type of ideas that you could implement nationally and internationally. If you're saying, hey, I want to start a food truck and I just want one and I just want to work in it and that and that's where I want to land, then I would probably um, get you connected with the Small Business Development Center. So we work really, really closely with the Small Business Development Center to make sure that people are getting the right type of help and what they need. And we also offer programs. So we offer the pre-accelerator and the accelerator programs free which is really cool. No that's cost. A, that's a good price tag. That free. Is yeah, right. <laughs> um, no cost specifically, so people can. Oh, there's there's me me and Kelly. Virtual high fives. Never thought we'd be doing that. Awesome. Um, and those and those classes are taught by an instructor. Um, they last either nine weeks or fourteen weeks, and that teaches you from concept to execution how you're gonna um, live out your business plan. That's awesome. Now, is this, uh, is it just kind of open entry, open exit? It's like whenever people need you, you're there sort of a relationship or? So for our 
programs, we cycle through them twice a year. So you might be inquiring at a time that they haven't started yet and you'll have to wait. But the mentors are always available and we are always having events and workshops to keep you engaged in the process. In the meantime, if you have to um, wait for the next iteration of a class to start. So there's lots of ways to be involved, stay involved and get the help you need while you might be waiting for a class to start. But that's a good question. Right. So now you, you also do some events, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes. Segway, segway. <laughs> so workshops is a great tool for people to just kind of get their feet wet and, um, okay, I'm going to come for an hour. I'm going to check out this content and I'm going to see if what they're talking about was right for me. So we have the best workshop speaker in town on July 29th. Wait. You know that handsome guy. I know that guy. <laughs> so these types of workshops are a great tool for people to get introduced to Onward and maybe also build some confidence in their entrepreneurial journey by saying, oh, I understand what he's saying. I like what he's saying. I can do this. And so we focus a lot on not just as aspiring entrepreneurs, but experienced entrepreneurs because maybe they have a new idea or maybe they've hit a roadblock. So this workshop, um, the one that you're presenting, is, you know, a topic that entrepreneurs ask us about. And they go, oh, man, I don't know how to talk about this. I don't know how to attract my audience. I don't know X, Y, and Z. And so it's super important for us to bring in experts like yourself to help and to show that um, there are folks in this community who are willing to just be not just that sounding board, but kind of fill the fill the shoes essentially of someone who has walked the walk and talked the talk and and know how to help out. So I'm so excited that you are going to be sharing all of your expertise with us and just. Well, I, two I always appreciate the opportunity to be able to share. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you don't get uh, a lot of opportunities to share. And uh, how do I put it? a forum where people are open to ideas and information. Usually yeah. it's, uh, in my past experience, it's been a mandated training or a mandated experience where someone has to learn or has to listen for a sign off or a check box. So I, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to be able to show this in an open environment like that where people are actually curious and they wanna know, so. Yes, I'm, I'm excited about it. And, you know, it's, we're still trying to figure out, do you stay virtual? Do you things, do things in person? We're in that very weird limbo time right now where we're right. not totally sure what people are comfortable with or what they're interested in. So I appreciate you um, doing this virtually till we figure out what the heck we're supposed to be doing with our lives yeah. right now. Yeah, I was actually talking to, uh, last week I had on uh, Kara Toronto from uh, t from t uh, Tech Association of Oregon last week, and we were talking about that. This is like this whole COVID thing kind of ripped the Band-Aid off of tech. You know, it's yeah. like people were kind of tripping, kind of maybe touching a little tech here and there, but then COVID hit and was like, okay, everything's virtual, everything's techie, we got to go there. And in a sense, I think it was, I hate to say it's a good thing. But in a sense, I think it was because it made people actually utilize technology at a higher clip versus under, versus underutilize it. And that, that okay. was that's something from my background from working in the industry myself. It's like if you would just use the dang thing, you would see it, it really isn't that bad. It actually can help. You know, one of the great things we discovered um, by turning our programs virtual was that there were folks from other areas that could participate. So for example, we are in our accelerator program right now and we have 15 people, um, 11 companies. And one of the gals um, uh, doesn't live here. Another guy lives up in Salem. And we also had moms who would have had a barrier with childcare now able to participate because it's virtual. Awesome. Yeah. And so, I mean, literally that's, that's, that's the stuff we're talking about. It's like, yeah. I now have access. I now have access. Yeah. I'm trying to see what the business model is going to be like, because people are trying to get people to go back to the office and work. And I'm like, but why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if they were what? Yes. At home, why do you need them to sit at the desk? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. No comment on that in case my boss is watching. 
<laughs> all right. Hey, Matt, you know, I think Caitlin's doing great just where she's at. <laughs> So uh, tell me, as far as uh, any personal burning desires, you know, what do you want to do? What, what's something personally that you know that you want to get accomplished? I mean, you've, you've done a lot for the community and you continue to for the business community. Now, what, what about Caitlin? What's your burning desire? You know, um, I recently was elected board president for Lane Transit District. And I still really feel like there's a lot of important um, civic engagement, civil service work that younger folks can get into. I do a lot of different um, volunteer opportunities and civic engagement, and oftentimes I'm the youngest in the room. I would love to see more young professionals get involved and, and feel confident in their involvement and feel like they have a voice in the room. And um, I'm, I've been working on that. So I actually was introduced to the chamber through leadership Eugene Springfield um, and was one of the founders of the Young Professionals Program. And I'm really personally passionate about engaging folks, um, it, whether it's your 20s or your 30s, but kind of this pre-rotary um, age in civic service and civic engagement. And I, I will keep pushing on that and I will keep making sure that um, different demographics are represented in the room and that different voices are heard. That's awesome. I, well, you know what I got to find though, and that's a great thing to drive for. I got to find a group that I can relate to because I'm, 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 I went to the, one of the first couple of um, young professional groups. I'm like, okay, obviously I'm too old for that. I uh, don't fit <laughs> there. And I'm, I'm too young for the rotary group. So I, I got to find the in-between group. <laughs> that really converse a... and honestly marty that conversation exists it's something that we've been talking about for a long time we're just still trying to figure it out but but that's where i'm at where i'm you know aging out of the young professionals and um looking for that like you said that that right fit so stay tuned on that okay. because I'm sure we will make some traction. And we'll stay tuned. So now if people want to get a hold of you and find out more about Onward Eugene or things that are coming up, events, what's the best way to get a hold of you? I'll meet them halfway. You can email me, you can message me on Facebook um, or LinkedIn, whatever platform people use, I'm there. Okay, cool. So as I warned you before we got on, you are now going to be victim number two for my new segment. It's called Let's Get Real. Did victim number one survive? Uh, she did. She okay, did survive. Okay. I Good can't else. promise you will, but she did. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. I think. Out of my book of questions. Ooh. Three selected questions. I ask you three. Three questions. Okay. You ready? Question number sure. one. <laughs> What original movie did you love but did not love the sequel? Um, I would have to say, oh, that's that's a good question because I like a lot of movies. Oh, Sandlot. Sandlot was like the best Sandlot? movie ever. You haven't seen Sandlot, the baseball movie with the kids? I've seen the Sandlot. I didn't know they did a sequel exactly that's the point it was crap yes they did a sandlot too and it was awful <laughs> well thank you for saving me I think if it comes up on my uh watch this movie list i'll avoid it like the plague <laughs> the yeah. other one that comes to mind is the never-ending story the first one's amazing and you know legendary and the second one's like not good at all okay Okay. Uh, number question number two. Number two. What was uh, one thing you begged your parents for as a kid, and they finally just gave it to you? Oh man. Um, it was probably something after I got it. I barely used it, right? Because that's what kids do. They say, "Please get me this thing," and you spend a bunch of money, and then you barely use it. I would say, um. Honestly, it was probably a puppy. We got a black lab puppy and it was so much work. 
It was the worst idea ever <laughs> to get a puppy. And yeah, they should have never given in ever. Never. Yeah. And to this day, um, I'm a cat owner. You're a <laughs> that lab got you off of dogs. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Question number three, final question. What was once one thing that you thought was stupid until you tried it? Um, I'm, I'm a risk taker, so I will try pretty much anything. I'm kind of like that too. Yeah. Like, I'm like, hey, there's traffic. Let's go run into it. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like, great. No matter what it is, I will try probably at least one time. Let me think. Um, that's more of a stumper. I'm trying to think. Well, what let's, let's, let's twist it. Let's say, okay. what's something that none of your friends would ever try or people that you know would never try that, you know, you're like, I'll do it. Oh yeah. Pl plenty of things there. That you I'm can disclose of like a, in this interview. What was that? <laughs> you can disclose in this interview. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm of course thinking of all the like death defying stunts, like skydiving and bungee jumping and and all of that sort of craziness like I was like yeah sure let's do it um even though my friends were like you're you're crazy like that looks awful and really scary um oh uh yeah I would I would probably say I've just tried all those like crazy like hot air balloon like anything that like you could potentially die at any second I've probably tried it and so, thought it was cool. Yeah. Because literally, what's the point of leaving this planet if you haven't done it? That's my philosophy. Yeah. I Yeah, why not? Like, you know, I did the same with kind of like food. Like, I'll try anything once. And it, I've had some very terrible things. But like, why not? I know. Well, thank what's you. the harm? You survived it. That wasn't so bad. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, so literally, I appreciate you taking time to sit with me today. This wasn't too painful, right? right? No, not at all. Thank you very much. So now, anything you want to share with us before we go? I just wanted to thank you. Honestly, it's it's fun to talk about Onward. It's exciting to build the Onward brand out in the community and continue to educate people on uh, the work that the team is doing. And so just honestly, I'm grateful to be here today and just a huge thank you to you. And I hope that people follow up with us and follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram because um, we're doing really cool things. Fantastic. And yes, you are. And folks, make sure I'll make sure I have all of Caitlin's hook, hook, uh, hookup, contact, not hookup, contact information. That's a whole different app. All, all <laughs> contact information in the comments below. If you want to be a guest on the show, I'll also have that link, link below. But Caitlin, again, I want to thank you so much for taking time to sit down with me today. And uh, I will see you uh, coming up here in about a week at our little get together. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being around. Have a super day. Thank you. I left that jacket in my car. Girl, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picks your perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker. Bill, I'm in the mood for a change up. I leave the city and return with my change up. They got amnesia, don't remember how they played us. They wanna knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. What's that? Left out with the who she? Yeah. Land game like 2D. I've been kicking like Bruce Lee. Okay. Margarita to the brim tip. Black denim need a slim.